Hi, this is Dr. Paul on another episode of Ask Your Pediatrician. Today we're talking about genetically modified food. You've probably heard the term GMO. It stands for genetically modified organisms. And I've known that, for example, Monsanto, uh, one of our big chemical companies, has been for a couple decades at least now, maybe three or four decades, working on modifying seeds and my thought was they were wanting to sell more Roundup and so they modified these seeds so they were tolerating the Roundup everything else in the field would die and their crops would grow beautiful and I thought well this is not a good idea that we're putting Roundup a herbicide pesticide on our crops somehow this can't be a good idea what I've come to learn is that folks this is a lot more dangerous than just having crops that can tolerate Roundup which in and of itself any herbicide in our diet, in our food chain, is not a good idea. But what's happened is they've modified the biggies in the United States. Let's just start with that for example. Here in 2013, 85% of corn, 91% of soy, and 88% of cotton are genetically modified. That's basically, if you're not eating organic, your corn and your soy is genetically modified in this country. You understand all GMO has been banned in Europe. And that's been for, I think, since 2003. They figured out that this was a huge disaster for health. But in this country, we continue to have genetically modified foods pervasive throughout our food chain. Because corn, corn syrup, high fructose corn syrup, soy products, soy proteins, if you're buying anything in a bag, a box, a can, you probably are eating genetically modified food. Now, over the decades that they've been testing fields of these genetically modified crops, it's interesting to note that, for example, in the soy fields, if there's a field of genetically modified soy and a field with regular soy, geese who fly through these fields through the Midwest will not touch the genetically modified soy. Farmers have found the same thing holds true for cattle, hogs, elk, squirrels, mice, even raccoons. If given the choice, they will not touch the genetically modified food. They will go right over to the field or the feeding bin that has the regular seed, regular corn, regular soy, whatever it may be. In fact, when they came out with genetically modified tomatoes, which is one of the first genetically modified foods, the rats who ate it, well, first of all, they wouldn't eat it unless it was the only thing. And even then they had to tube feed these rats and seven of 40 of them died. Nevertheless, it was initially approved for human consumption. This is the challenge we're having, BT corn. Same problem, chicken who ate BT corn were dying twice as fast as those who ate regular corn. So how do they modify these genes anyway? What's this got to do with, you know, a problem in our health? They actually blast genetic material from a different species into the genes of the corn or soy or whatever they're working on. And what really distressed me the most was to learn that actually, I've known this, at the cellular organism position, take bacteria in our gut. Now we have billions if not trillions of bacteria in our intestinal tract. These single-celled organisms can transfer genetic material. This is something that happens all the time. So they've found that some of the bacteria that can be in your gut, because you eat this food that has these genetically modified genes, for example, to in some cases, manufacture your own pesticide. The bacteria in your gut can now get that ability to manufacture pesticide. That's just, oh, horrifying to think that you can actually make pesticides in your gut. We wonder why we're having problems that relate to brain and psychiatric issues and focus issues and learning and developmental, on and on and on, the immune system, huge effects from having genetically modified food in your diet. So I'd like to recommend a book for you to take a look at just to get in-depth information about GMO foods. Jeffrey Smith has written the book Seeds of Deception and he's done a masterful job of documenting the history in the development of genetically modified organisms, genetically modified foods. And after you read this book, without a doubt you will realize this is something we must avoid at all costs and we need to get rid of in our country once and for all, in fact, in our world. Thank you for watching. I'm Dr. Paul.